Aristotle, Living Virtuously, and The Golden Mean. One of the first life philosophies we delve into is also one of the oldest and comes from a cluster of philosophical thought between two to three millennia ago. This particular life philosophy comes from Aristotle, of course known as one of ancient Greece's most famous thinkers, along with Socrates and Plato. You've probably seen pictures of his marble bust, even if you didn't know it was him. Aristotle was the founder of the Lyceum, the first scientific institute in the ancient world in Athens, Greece. Along with his teacher and mentor Plato, he originated numerous ideas about logic, science, and simply how to live. By the way, Plato's teacher was Socrates. They all lived and pontificated in Athens, which added to the reputation of the city as the birthplace of philosophical thought. Aristotle was born in 384 BC in the Greek town of Stagiros, and it was said that his interest in science was inspired by his father, Nicomachus, who was a physician. At the age of 17, he traveled to Athens and studied under Plato at his renowned academy, the preeminent school for philosophers and thinkers. From there, he traveled to the court of Philip of Macedon and became childhood tutor to Alexander the Great, who you've probably heard of. He accomplished a great many things, but what concerns us in this book is his perspective on fulfillment, better living, and happiness. In fact, the achievement of fulfillment is what Aristotle felt was the true goal of every human. He felt that all human activities were done in order to attain some measure of fulfillment. If you weren't attaining fulfillment, then you were not acting in accord with his principles. Fulfillment was known to him and ancient Greeks as eudaimonia, which is an important concept to first explore. Eudaimonia Eudaimonia is an ancient Greek word that most closely resembles our modern conception of fulfillment. Obviously, it's what we should orient our lives toward, right? When we try to articulate the purpose of our lives, we most commonly invoke the word fulfillment. We tell ourselves and others that the ultimate purpose of our jobs, our relationships, and the conduct of our day-to-day -day lives is the pursuit of fulfillment. It's an overarching feeling of contentment and satisfaction. However, the ancient Greeks distinguish eudaimonia from happiness. The difference between the two is pain. It is possible to be fulfilled via eudaimonia while suffering physical or mental pain, yet it's not possible to be happy while suffering pain. Happiness is a more temporary emotional state. It can be as powerful as a volcano, yet vanish within an instant. Fulfillment is a long-term state of being that springs from living to our values and consciously choosing our lives. Eudaimonia operates as background music in our minds during hardships and tells us that everything will be just fine and remain in order. It's the feeling that despite temporary setbacks or obstacles, your life is still exactly what you want it to be. If eudaimonia is the goal over happiness, then what is the best and most dependable way to eudaimonia? No, it's not necessarily seizing the day, carpe diem, or satisfying your every whim or desire, hedonism. Neither is it achieving nirvana through deprivation, Buddhism, or accepting fate for what it is, stoicism. Socrates held the belief that embodying traits such as courage, self-regulation, wisdom, and justice were the key to achieving eudaimonia. His prized pupil Plato felt that control over emotions and impulses and remaining rational at all times would lead one to eudaimonia. Of course, Aristotle differed from all of the above. In his view, eudaimonia was achieved by living virtuously, and one lives virtuously by adhering to traits of the golden mean. If you live your life with virtue, everything will be what you want it to be. As you can ascertain from the name, virtue, and thus a fulfilling life, is a result of moderating and regulating a select few desires and drives. At its root, this is not such a foreign concept. We see such prescriptions from all types of religions. The Ten Commandments, for instance, which exist both in Christianity and Islam. But it's that tricky part about balance being the key that is a lesser taken path to fulfillment. Can we indulge in positive traits too much to the point where it is detrimental? 
This is like asking if too much ice cream will be bad for you. Of course, there is always a trade-off, and Aristotle clearly articulates the extremes that we must avoid to be virtuous and achieve eudaimonia. The Golden Mean From the name, you can already guess at what it's about. If not, it can be renamed Aristotle's Goldilocks Principles, and the meaning would remain clear and nearly intact. The Golden Mean is about seeking the middle, moderation, and not being an outlier as it pertains to specific traits. According to Aristotle, this was the path to a life full of virtue and thus eudaimonia, and he articulated this concept in his book Nicomachean Ethics. The origin of the book's title is unknown, but knowing that his father was named Nicomachus, it wouldn't be a stretch to assume that it was to pay homage to his father's teachings and beliefs. Nicomachean Ethics was written around 340 BC, and the work itself is actually a series of lectures that was later pieced together and published as a complete work. As Aristotle defines it, the golden mean is the exact middle point between two extremes, where one side verges on excess and the other side verges on deficiency. Aristotle cleverly positioned himself between a rock and a hard place, where the only solution was to avoid both. Both extremes are vices, and thus, the only virtuous path is between the two of them. Therefore, choosing the medium route every time will slowly and surely lead you to eudaimonia. This results in a healthy balance of quelling desires, no excesses, and forcing you out of your comfort zone, no deficiencies. One should not be too brave or too cowardly, as the brave is foolhardy and the cowardly is fearful. One should not be too emotional, but neither should he be too inexpressive. He should not be too light-hearted, but also not too serious and stoic. He should be open-minded, yet not be too easily swayed, as the open-minded has no conviction and the not easily swayed can be stubborn to the point of ignorance. Don't be lazy, but don't be overly consumed by your pursuits as to fall ill or neglect other areas of your life. Don't eat too much, but don't starve yourself. You get the idea. Aristotle has a few underlying beliefs that resulted in his formulation of the golden mean. First, the physically and medically healthy person is balanced. They have an equilibrium within them. For instance, a man or woman's temperature can't stray too high or low, and the human body can't eat too much or too little. Here, moderation can literally be the difference between life and death. One's body cannot and should not go to extremes and thus the character should not. Equilibrium should be sought in terms of virtues and traits. Second, each person's mean or middle point is relative and unique. Fulfillment, of course, cannot be objective because different pursuits make different people happy. People have different tolerances and proclivities that must be taken into account. Someone who is 2 meters tall must have a different type of diet than someone who is only 1.5 meters tall. Both should eat at a level of moderation, but this level will be wildly different in proportion. One who seeks fulfillment through food must find the mean between being a glutton and starving. Each person's definition of excess and deficiency is their own. Knowing exactly what is appropriate in a given situation is difficult. Third. The golden mean is self-perpetuating. Remember that virtue lies between two extremes. Thus, if you draw too near to either extreme, you'll start to receive social backlash. If you stay close to the mean, you'll receive praise from others and fulfillment from yourself. You'll be naturally reinforced to continue seeking moderated behavior based on this praise and positivity. What feels good will be what we strive to do. Nearly everything about the golden mean lends itself to a life philosophy. You may not necessarily agree that you should avoid excess, but at the very least, we can all agree that we must avoid deficiencies. But then again, can't we categorize excesses as deficiencies relative to something else? In the end, too much of anything has its drawbacks. Too much of a good thing ends up being a bad thing, and bad things, well, become even worse things. We can get closer to the specifics of Aristotle's recommended way of living when we delve into the specific deficiencies and excesses he wrote about. 
Virtue versus Vices Aristotle possessed the belief that virtue, and thus eudaimonia, would spring from moderation of eleven specific traits, which again are right at the midpoint between excess and deficiency. The first trait we'll cover is courage, and courage is the midpoint between reckless action, excess, and cowardice, deficiency. Too much courage and you'll leap without thinking. Too little courage and you'll make only fear-based decisions. Below is a handy diagram with all the vices and virtues neatly displayed to gain a sense of context before diving into each individual scale. Courtesy of bcresources.net But Aristotle places another requirement around his articulated virtues. For Aristotle, virtue is a habit disposed toward action by deliberate choice, being at the mean relative to us and defined by reason as a prudent man would define it. This means virtue is only achieved through deliberately and intentionally choosing the golden mean because it is the noble and correct thing to do. Unlike other philosophies where only the actions are judged, Aristotle judges both intent and action. If you act within the golden mean by accident, unintentionally, or because it was your only choice, then you will not attain fulfillment. There is no accidental virtue, and the outcome is not the only important thing in achieving eudaimonia. This sounds exhausting, but this parallels our emotions in real life. Simply put, are you virtuous when you are commanded to clean the house, even if it is the right and fair thing to do? No, and the fact that you're upset by this command makes it clear that you are knowingly shirking your responsibilities and not being virtuous. In the end, it becomes a tall task, but whoever said the path to fulfillment was supposed to be easy? This has been 10-Minute Philosophy. From Buddhism to Stoicism, Confucius and Aristotle, bite-sized wisdom from some of history's greatest thinkers. Written by Patrick King, narrated by Russell Newton. Copyright 2019 by Patrick King. Production copyright by Patrick King.